Could Dragon's Dogma 2 be the new game that pushed the action RPG genre this time? With the game's release being right around the corner, everyone is hyped with the promises of epic adventures, a deep combat system, and a revolutionary open world experience. While Dragon's Dogma 2 is an action RPG, don't let the similarity in the genre trick you into thinking that this is going to be the next Witcher 3 or Elden Ring successor. These are completely different titles made for different kinds of audiences. But Dragon's Dogma 2 has promising features worth exploring that have the potential to turn this game into the next major gaming hit. Let me explain that. Dragon's Dogma 2 is the sequel to the now 12-year-old Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, and the game takes place in a parallel world. While it's not a direct sequel to Dark Arisen, it still retains some familiar elements of the series. According to Hideaki Itsuno, the game's director who has worked on Devil May Cry 3, 4, 5 and the original game as their directors, the sequel is his dream game coming true. So we can look at Dragon's Dogma 2 as a passion project with a high budget which is the best combo possible in my opinion. The story revolves around Arisen and a fierce dragon that has stolen our hero's heart literally. The goal is to get strong enough, with the help of your pawns, to be able to meet the dragon and get your heart back. Dragon's Dogma 2 features different kingdoms such as Vermont, which is the human kingdom, and Batal, which is the home to the beast-like creatures known as Beastren. Players get to choose their Arisen's origins based on the available races, and choosing each option would come with some pros and cons within the gameplay which I will mention briefly in a bit. Dragon's Dogma 2 boasts 10 different vocations. There are your classic vocations such as Fighter, Mage, Archer, and Thief, which are the game's basic vocations. The Fighter is your typical RPG class character with a focus on sword and shield combat. The Mage, as you might have guessed, specializes in magical spells such as offensive and defensive spells with healing being one of the most important spells of this vocation. Archer is the best when it comes to ranged attacks and can take on enemies by shooting their weak spots. Lastly, the Thief vocation is the best for agile players who enjoy fast-paced combat and want to dodge the incoming threats constantly. This vocation is also more capable of climbing enemies compared to others. And then, there are the advanced vocations which act as either a deeper vocation or sometimes a hybrid one. These vocations are split into Mystic Spear Hand, the mix of melee combat and some magic spells, Magic Archer, whose name gives away its speciality, Sorcerer, which is a powerful version of the mage with access to more powerful spells, Trickster, a vocation with the ability to create illusions which can act as a support for the party, Warrior, the vocation which can use two-handed weapons, and finally, the Warfare which is a jack of all trades since it can do everything else other classes do, but I expect some sort of limits for that. Every single vocation will be used to fight epic battles and various encounters, so planning out before each fight and picking useful items before each trip into the world is going to be crucial. Throughout your journey as the Arisen, you get to choose between different pawns as your companions. Adjusting your party members by different pawns' vocations is going to be the key strategy in the gameplay progression. The usage of pawn system is not merely limited to the vocations, since these companions are constantly watching your playstyle and will try to adapt to your way of playing. For example, use a specific item mid-combat and after a while, some of your pawns might just do that as well. It's worth noting that there's a limit to the vocations that pawns can use and some vocations are locked to the Arisen. You can also share your created pawns with other players, but that's about the only online element this game will feature. You may wonder why a pawn must be shared. You would be surprised to know that if you're using a shared pawn with prior knowledge about a certain quest, the pawn can assist you with info and useful tips and help you tackle the quest differently since it already went through that quest once. Also, do you think pawns should have equal skills and vocations as the Arisen or it was a good choice on Capcom's side to limit their abilities? Tell me what you think in the comment section. Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be completely different than your regular open world games. The game features minimal hand-holding, which means you aren't going to follow a dotted line to your next objective. You have to listen to what NPCs say and follow the world's clues. There are certain elements such as timed quests that if you don't finish them within an in-game time frame, the quest would proceed without you and things might not go as you planned and might have a surprising outcome at the end. 
While it's not a completely new gameplay design feature, I remember Red Dead Redemption 2 having similar missions to some extent, like that one quest that Arthur had to steal a Cornwall oil tanker to rob a train. And if we didn't play through it in time, the mission would proceed without Arthur and the camp members would become mad at. Although the number of these types of missions was quite a few. Speaking of Rockstar games, an interesting fact about Dragon's Dogma 2 is that Hideaki Itsuno once said that they took inspiration from Grand Theft Auto 5 in creating the world of Dragon's Dogma 2. Apparently, they wanted to make satisfying moments using emergent gameplay. So it would be interesting to see other elements such as the dynamic world events and encounters in the game as well. The world of this game is going to be so detailed that the smallest decisions such as the character's height would affect the places you can reach. For example, a tall reason might be able to reach places a shorter one couldn't. But what happens if your character is not tall, or you are simply unable to go through a path to reach your goal? There are going to be multiple different approaches for objectives or places to go, so the game is not only respecting your playstyle, but also giving you more replay value and different choices on a gameplay level. And while you cannot ride horses to travel between places, there is a fast travel system in the game. However, Itsuno claimed that the reason players want horses is not so much because they want to experience horse riding, but because they feel bored on the road, and our goal was to prepare a path so enjoyable that players would not feel the need for a horse. So it seems like the world of Dragon's Dogma 2 is packed with fun things to do, and players would miss them by using horses and fast travels. Also, since you'd be using carts to fast travel, you might get ambushed by the enemies. I just hope that there aren't too many backtrackings in the game, as I don't know how to confront this one design choice. Guess we will find out about it very soon. So, is Dragon's Dogma 2 overhyped? The answer is no. It's definitely not, but it's not a game made for everyone, and that's a good thing. It's not going to be as easy to get into as The Witcher or Assassin's Creed. And while the game is definitely going to be challenging, the comparisons to Elden Ring are not correct, since the game is not as punishingly hard as Souls-like titles. While at its core, Dragon's Dogma 2 is an evolution of the original, the approach it's taking makes it accessible to newcomers as well. The game will feature unique vocations with a heavy emphasis on deep combat. So epic fights are going to be a core part of the game and you can enjoy partaking in them with different vocations and parts. The pawn system will keep you entertained since you will always want to maximize your party's output and they're always learning your actions. There is a very detailed world packed with lots of stuff waiting for the adventures to be discovered. I certainly cannot wait to experience the game since it seems like it's going to feature some of the most important things I find intriguing in a game, which are player agency, emergent gameplay, and fun exploration. Although I'm not certain about how the game will pull everything it promises, I have a good feeling about it generally. So I assure you that there will be more videos on the channel covering Dragon's Dogma 2 in the upcoming months. In the meantime, if you enjoy the exploration side of action RPGs, Watch this video as I will talk in detail about how Assassin's Creed Valhalla guides players to different locations.